The imagination on Christmas Eve is captured by the silence which represents the quietness and the hiddenness of God's coming in the birth of Jesus. But the imagination is also captured by the speech, by the songs, by the exuberance, the words and sounds which tell the meaning of this event and express the joy of it. We have the silent night on the, on the hills of Bethlehem as the shepherds are quietly watching their sheep. And then we have the noise and the sound of the choirs of angels. I mean, this message itself is split between two songs. The first, uh, Christmas in a scrub, filled with the noise of the Australian bush, the kookaburras laughing for the birth of God. And the song after the message is Silent Night, emphasising the gentleness, the humbleness, hiddenness of Christ's coming, but which also nevertheless in verse 2 will remind us of the choirs of angels. Today I invite you to sit with silence and speech, the silence and the speech of Christmas. First, in order to have context of what this birth of Jesus really means for us, we need to address the possibilities of silence. Silence can be a good thing, but so often it's not. Some of you might have the experience of the silence in the car on the way home after you've publicly embarrassed your spouse at a public gathering. You might know the silence, sometimes more tragically, that sits in the gap of a relationship which has grown cold or unloving. There's the silence sometimes of answers which we do not have to give, or maybe of answers which are too painful, either to speak or to hear. There is a silence that sits like a rebuke on a call for help. There is a silence that comes when weeping is worn out and exhaustion sets in. There is a silence that covers up for evil. There's a silence that comes when we have no power or voice to affect our destiny. There is a silence that comes when we experience shame and guilt that leaves us with nothing to say. And worst of all, all those human silences are reflections of and find their root in a huge negative silence that can sit in the relationship between humanity and God. There is a silence that comes when we look at the universe, which is so massive, and fear that maybe there is no one there to acknowledge our existence. There's a silence that results from knowing our shame and guilt in the presence of God, there's a silence that comes from wondering, what's going on in the world? Does God even care or hear us? Long ago, at the time of Jesus, there were people who spoke about the fact that the prophet Malachi, the last of the acknowledged prophets of God, had been 400 years previously. And that since that time there had been a silencing of the prophetic word. At best now, rather than the word of the Lord being proclaimed, thus says the Lord, at best they had what they called the, the daughter of a voice, like the, the smallest whispers of God made. It seemed to them that God was no longer speaking. But then God broke the silence. God spoke. And it started in the events surrounding the birth of Jesus. God broke his silence. Now there are angelic messengers coming, bringing God's words of promise and blessing. Starting with the announcement, the angelic announcement of the birth of John the Baptist. Then the announcement to Mary that she would have a child. The words to Joseph that this child would be from the Holy Spirit. And then on the night of his birth, the glory of God, the very visible presence of God himself is seen on the hills outside Bethlehem. And there is an angel with a pronouncement and choirs of angels. And when they are silenced and the shepherds go their way, they see the child 
Gentile, and then they go through the town telling everyone of what they have heard and seen. In one noisy night, the silence is broken. And now the speech, the word of God is heard. The word of God, in fact, has become incarnate. But the first thing they hear that night, the angel's proclamation, those words to break the silence, the words are, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all the people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Do not be afraid. In the breaking of the silence, there is the breaking of fear. God speaks and assures humanity that there is nothing to fear. Indeed, he assures us instead of good news of great joy. God himself has acted to bring the long-promised Messiah, the one who will be saviour, the one who will give us God's life in all its fullness. The baby, wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger, we discover, as Hebrew says, that God has now spoken by a son. This is the one in whom we can recognise Emmanuel, the God who is with us. And then the great company of the heavenly host appear singing glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace. Notice that when God is glorified in the shouts and praises of the angels, God is glorified and he's glorified in his gift of peace. This speech changes everything. God does not want us left in our estrangement from him, and God himself acts to repair the rift. And the response to God's speech is also speech. The natural response of the shepherds is they rush off to see the amazing thing that's happened and then they spread the word concerning what had been told them about the child. And then they return glorifying and praising God for all that they have seen. To hear God's announcement of peace and a saviour naturally moves our hearts into praise and thanksgiving. And that movement of praise is still the natural response for we tonight who again hear the story that we would join these songs, some of these songs, hundreds of years old, to sing the praise of what God has done for us. As we still wonder at the birth of the Christ and the love that God has for humankind. Tonight, let your hearts exult in this message of joy and love and sing loud. But that then also leads us into another place. In the story, when the shepherds are gone, we discover that there is another, now different, kind of silence. We're told that Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. We can now enjoy silences. Because after all the celebrations tonight, and I don't know what your traditions are, but mine are, after this service we go home, we eat, we give gifts, the celebration goes on. But nevertheless, there comes a time tonight, whenever that is for you, when things will once again quiet down. May God grant that when things grow quiet for you, that you will be left with the lasting effect of God's speech, so that the silence that you experience is the quietness of peace. The light of the good news of great joy. All our silences are transformed. There sometimes is a silence. But it is never a silence of absence. Because God is 
with us. There is not the silence of the grave, because in the Christ child we have been promised eternal life. There is not the silence of fear or of abandonment, because we know that the deepest yearning and call of the human heart for the help of God has been answered. This is not the silence of exhausted weeping. Now we have the silence of weeping that has come to an end. It is the silence of comfort. It is the silence of peace. It is the silence of joy. And that great silence of Christmas Eve transforms our possibilities and opens up for us another type of silence available in human relationships. Now there can be a silence that is the sign of care. A silence that leaves the other person undisturbed. It can now be a silence of safety, where there is no warning or clamour to be given because everything is okay. There is a silence of understanding when there are no words, but now there are no words because everything has been said and understood. There's the silence of comfort, the reverberation of the love that has already been spoken. There's the silence that remains as you look into each other's eyes after having spoken words of assurance and love. There is the silence of a child tucked into bed and now sleeping soundly in safety and peace. On Christmas Eve, we remember the silence and the speech of God and it opens us up to a transformation in all our human silences and speaking. Tonight, let's sing with gusto, let's celebrate the good news of great joy, let's join with the angels in singing hallelujah, glory to God in the highest heaven. Then let's also accept comfortable, peaceable, and joyful silences that God gives. Let's go tonight able to embrace the loving silence of God and may our sleep, as we're about to sing, be the sleep of heavenly peace. Glory to God in the highest heaven. Amen. Amen. And on earth peace to those with whom he is pleased. Amen.